going to do a quick test today of a Comtech KU Band LPOD buck. Originally I was going to do this uh, demonstrating how I could use a 70 megahertz modem and a Quintech frequency converter. Unfortunately I've run out of time. This has to be packed and shipped today and so I'm going to use instead my Comtech EF Data 570L L band modem. A couple of things that I've had to do on this modem. The first thing is that this Comtech buck does not require 24 volt or 48 volt over the IF cable and so I've disabled that. Also this buck doesn't need 10 megahertz reference so I've disabled that as well. It's a very complete buck. It takes its power from the AC not from the IFL cable. So if you look at these three connectors on the side to the left J1 is the transmit in that's coming from the modem that's going to be an L band signal from that Comtech EF Data 570L modem. The J3 is the power cable connected directly to my AC and to the right is an M and C cable. This is one thing that I can't use today because this is a brand new buck. Well I say brand new it doesn't look as if it's ever been used because the original connectors are still in the box with it and I haven't had time to make up the MNC cable. But fortunately this buck is enabled to transmit without having to make any changes over the MNC. So although I can't demonstrate all of the features that Comtech would offer, I can at least run through the frequency range of 13.75 to 14.5 and make sure that the buck is transmitting correctly just using the modem as the control. The other item attached to the buck is this combination of cross guide coupler and dummy load. The dummy load prevents any radiation straying into the room and frying anything including me. The cross guide coupler with the cables hanging off it allow me to connect to a spectrum analyzer to check the frequency and that gray blocky thing is the power head that connects directly to the Agilent power meter. So those are the two items that I'm going to use to measure the output. Below is the Agilent spectrum analyzer and the top is the power meter. There's another connection on the side of this buck. If I was not using this cross guy coupler I could connect directly to that silver port. The silver port is an attenuated output measuring port and you can see from the label that it's attenuated to minus 40.8 at 13750 and up to four, minus 40.8 at 14.5. So that also shows the total output range of this buck. It's the complete KU band frequency. Let's just verify the settings on the modem. First I'm going to go to the ODU. I know that I've made these changes already so it's not going to be a surprise but at least I can show you where they're made. Going first to the buck I'm going to look at the 10 megahertz reference. 10 megahertz reference is off what I want. I'm going to go to the local oscillator. Los local oscillator frequency is 12.8 which is correct for this buck. It's not necessary to do this but what it does when I set the frequency on this modem it automatically translates it to the KU band frequency. For example if I set 1000 megahertz in this modem that's the L band frequency it will come out as 13.8 gigahertz in the KU band range. So as I say it's not necessary but it, it just makes it easy when you're setting the, the frequency to see what the KU band frequency is going to be when you set the L band frequency. It sounds a little bit convoluted but that's what it's all about. Okay and now let's go back and look at the DC power. DC power again is off. So verifying once more that I'm not sending any 24 volt or 48 volt to this buck. This buck is, re is relying entirely upon the AC power supply. Okay now let's look at the transmit and see where the frequency is. The frequency is 1000 megahertz as I said 13.8 in the KU band range. So I'm going to get the buck set up, turned on, and we can begin the test. Oh now, as it's come up, the I'm at 14.5, top end of the frequency range. And based on the power, the power is negative 37, I'm showing 7 watts. I want to bring it up and see where it settles at 14.5. I won't take it really much above 100 because that's the most because 100 watts is the maximum usable power 
in KU band. So I'm going to increase by increasing. You see this goes down because this is a attenuation. It wants increase by a couple more to neg 34 with 13 watts. Let me step this up so it doesn't take forever to get through this. Neg 28. Okay, now we're up to 48 watts, basically half the power. So now I have to be a little bit more cautious. Neg 27, we're showing 84. I'll take it to Neg 28. Sorry, I really went the other way. I'll take it to Neg 26. Okay, it's 102 watts. I'm not going to take it beyond that. But what I want to do now, I want to change the frequency. So we know at 14.5, it will put out 102 watts at negative 26 coming out of the modem. So now let's go and change the frequency. I'm going to change the frequency to 14.0 this time. There it is, you see on the bottom level, 14.0. Of course it disappears off the spectrum analyzer because I'd have to reset the spectrum analyzer to see that. But what is interesting is that the power has now dropped to 94. And don't forget, I haven't changed the power settings. And so the output power is just a function of the frequency and the design characteristics for this particular buck. So now we're going to go down even more. We're going to see what it looks like at 13,750. 13,750 is the bottom of its power range. There it is, 13,750. I'll make the change and watch and see, what's the, and see what the power changes to on the power meter. Dropped even more, it dropped to 86. So when we're running this in real life, we would probably have to adjust the power as we adjust the frequency. Not that the frequency gets adjusted very, very often. And typically when you're using these, you know the frequency that's been assigned to you by the satellite operator. And all you have to do is to adjust the power to a suitable setting, normally defined by the operator. So what I'm going to do now, at 86, I'm going to increase my power a little bit and get us back up. See, it's coming up. There, just by increasing the power, we've come back up to 107 watts. So, that's in the PSAT range, not in the P1DB range. Um, this is 13,750. Let me just adjust the spectrum analyzer. So we can see it. There it is. So it's outputting OK. And it's outputting at 107 watts now. So for a very simple test of this 125 watt KU band buck, we've seen that it works in t very well across the entire frequency range of 13.75 to 14.5. So now I have to wrap up the tests because we have to wrap up the amplifier. It's been sold. It now needs to be packed carefully and shipped to the new customer. So thank you for watching.